to make it a universal right. I'm not hearing the kind of voices that we need to hear. Of course, from you, yes. But I'm talking about from policy makers. We need to have a much bigger campaign on this and somehow get over this popular population stabilization bogey which is there. In fact, we're going to have a discussion, a special discussion, not on maternal mortality, but on population stabilization because we're so worried about the figures. Next week, that's coming up. If you have any suggestions for points on that, I, I, I'm happy to take them. Good, okay. So, so this thing. Then one other point is when we look at policy frameworks and the implementation, one is the budgetary provisions. There also, if you you will find both at the center and in the states, although you know the actual allocations look as though they've really gone up. In real terms, in fact, they have not, and we are still uh, below one percent GDP still today. I mean, maybe just I mean they're claiming now it's gone up, but in any case, so one is budgetary provisions, but there is also a constitutional issue here. You see, what is the role of the state? What role can the central government play or central monitoring agencies play in a central program like, say, for example, Janani Suraksha Yojana, just taking an example like that, in the implementation of the state governments? Now, this is an issue which we really have to look at because very often what we are finding is that because we are so anxious, and rightly so, that the state governments are not moving on it, we feel that, okay, so let's set up more monitoring agencies with the central government and somehow push through the central government the states. But I believe this is a very defective way. Because I tell you what the central government is doing is equally shocking and ridiculous. Because they have their own blinkered view of what an all India approach should be, and they are not prepared to factor in the local circumstances and issues. So that is, is it going to help the women? I don't think it is. And therefore, I believe in our anxiety to push an issue, we should be fighting on policy matters. And in the states, we should be taking up all these issues with our respective state governments and then bringing those issues back to the center. But I think just because things are not working, to try and give more power to the central government in a situation like this, I, I, I think that is questionable. And it's certainly not within the constitutional framework. There's a limited mandate which can be done. Because in any case, the central government is not even giving all the money as far as many issues about public health is concerned. So we are also having to look at that. And lastly, um, the point that I want to make is about the Parliamentary Standing Committee. And how are we being able to raise certain issues on health? Now, in the last couple of years, there are certain very important issues which have come up. One is taming the private sector, the huge proliferation of the private sector, and the inaccessibility of most Indian citizens to health care. So, a, strengthening the public health system, putting much more emphasis on the government's training programs and education, medical education, so that personnel are available, because that is very crucial. We go on talking about primary health centers and clinics, etc., but we really don't have the personnel. I mean, the gap is getting bigger and bigger. As demand grows, the gap is getting so big. So this is really a red alert. This is the emergency India is facing today, that you have such a dearth of trained personnel, medical personnel, starting from doctors to the ANM to the ASHA, to women all your, because it's mainly women who in any case are, uh, are running those centers. You have such a huge dearth of it, and yet look at the nursing institutes you have in this country, and whatever nurses you're producing, they're going straight into the private sector. So how do we do it? How do we deal with this? This is a very important issue as far as personnel is concerned. So this is an issue which the Standing Committee has been looking at. And now after a lot of effort, they've given some you know, um, blueprint for the number of institutes now they're going to open, etc., etc. That's one thing. Secondly, now some aspect of 
control of the private sector as far as fees, etc., are concerned. Some state governments have made quite important strides in this. And so if we can link up with that, that's very, very important. In the central legislation which was passed last week, I was absolutely shocked to find that the basic, the core of that entire legislation is so bureaucratic. It is just giving you how you are going to get a clinic to register. Clinic means any medical, I mean any a medical institution which is providing care. So that's all they're bothered about, registration, so a little more corruption and license, it can be done. But as far as costs are concerned, as far as fees are concerned, they reserve that right entirely for the central government's bureaucracy. Nothing, it, I, we fought for it in Parliament, I moved amendments, but the best that I could get from the uh, government was an assurance that is going to come in the rules. So I would be really, be, you know, would like you to, all of you who are interested in these topics, to look it up then, see how the rules are being framed, and somehow get involved, because it's all public now, it's all on the web, uh, uh, on their website, so you can do that. Then the other thing which I am very keenly looking at now, and I've just managed, A, Asha's, we have just, we're having that discussion on, and two, clinical trials. So now the health committee is going to have a special discussion on clinical trials and the complete absence of protection of subjects from big pharma companies who are using us as guinea pigs. So this is a very important issue. Within that, we've also had a two very good reports on the closure of vaccine units and the impact it has had on the public immunization program, on our children, and the huge gaps that were there in vaccinating our children. So, yes, it's true that there is a role that the Standing Committee can play. What is that role? The Standing Committee, within a limited mandate, can choose certain issues on which you can have a discussion, call your experts in, call the whoever's involved in that. But for instance, now we've just given a very good report on drug price control, on this Jan and um, to ensure generic drugs availability free, in the, at least starting with the government hospitals. So like that, we can choose certain issues. And certainly, um, if you like, we can work together and see how we can have uh, you know, maternal mortality in the next couple of months because the agenda government is not bothered about it at all. So there is a limited role which, uh, which the, the standing committees play. They play a more important role in vetting laws. So there are two aspects. One is vetting the draft law. And standing committees do play a very important role in trying to strengthen that law and pushing for the amendments and then questioning the government in parliament when the law comes, why have you not accepted the standing committee recommendation? So that is a little more powerful instrument of intervention when the law framing is concerned. MPs are supposed to be, their main job is supposed to be framing laws. But as you all know, the main job now seems to be just, well, shouting scream. So, and therefore, what I would request you, if you believe that, and the other instrument that we do have are questions, during questionnaire. And you know, we that also depends on your luck, because you can give 100 questions and maybe only one will get balloted, because it's a lottery system. Of course, you'll be amazed to know that there's certain MPs in, in the house which I belong to, I mean, they're getting questions every, almost every day they get a question, and those questions are usually related to industrial matters. <laughs> so uh, do let me know on these three aspects, what can be done. Um, we've already worked out an agenda for the next three months, but if there's anything I can do to push this issue, and I think in the population debate, this is a good, because it's coming up next week, so I think within the population debate, which is going to happen in Parliament, we can also use at least some aspect of the issue of maternal mortality to say that you know we are not even able to know what are we you know what is our focus and also infant mortality. Both these issues we can do and try and push it through. Thank you so much.